The radiator drain plug is located on the lower left side of the radiator at the front of the vehicle and indicated by the red arrow. You will need to remove the under engine trays to access it. You can find additional assistance with that task by following the link provided at the end of this video. When the coolant drains, it tends to run along the lower radiator mounting plate and drain out in several places. Be prepared to catch the fluid with a larger tray or a couple of buckets. This photo illustrates the drain plug, Red Arrow. It is made of plastic and will dry out over the years, so be prepared for it to break off in the radiator. Use a flathead screwdriver and remove the plug. The plug in our project car broke off halfway out. If this happens, use a pick or a small flathead screwdriver and gently walk the plug out. Just be ready for fluid when it finally releases. With the drain plug removed, you can see how the coolant runs down into the radiator mounting bracket and out along the drain holes, red arrows. While the coolant from the radiator and most hoses will drain from the radiator drain plug, there is still coolant in the block. The drain plug for the block is located on the rear right side indicated by the red arrow. You can get access to it by reaching up between the exhaust and the block. If you remove the plug, make sure to install a new washer when reinstalling it. Move to the top of the engine and open the cap on the coolant reservoir to help break the vacuum seal and drain the fluid, yellow arrow. You're going to need access to the vent plug, red arrow, on the top of the motor to vent the system while refilling it. You can vent the system without removing the turbo pipe, but it's going to get messy. I prefer removing the pipe. If you're removing the pipe, disconnect the line running to the turbo pipe with a 17 mm wrench. Note, there are two washers, red arrows, that need to be replaced if you remove the line. Disconnect the clamp over the pipe by reaching down and unclipping it. Then remove the lid. Next, use a flathead screwdriver and loosen the hose clamps on both ends of the pipe, red arrows. You can now remove the pipe from the engine. You now have lots of room to access the 12 mm vent bolt as well as place rags to catch all the venting fluid. To flush the system, close all of the openings and fill the reservoir with distilled water. Run the motor with the heater on full for a few minutes, then drain and repeat until the water runs out clear. To fill and vent the system, the best way is to rent or borrow a coolant system pressure tester. This will allow you to fill, pressurize, and vent the system all at one time. If you do not have a pressure tester, you can still fill and vent the system, but it's important to get all of the air out of the system or the engine will run hot. Raise the front of the vehicle up. This will get the vent port to the highest point in the system. Note, if you have completely drained the cooling system using the drain plug on the side of the block, you may want to disconnect the upper radiator hose at the radiator. Hold it up in the air and fill the block by pouring coolant into the hose. It's best if you can open the vent at the outlet of the cylinder head so you can tell when the block is full. Do not fill the coolant hose completely as it makes a mess when you reconnect it back to the radiator. Next, open the 12 mm vent bolt and slowly pour coolant into the reservoir until coolant starts to come out from the vent hole. Close the vent hole and reservoir and run the motor for a few minutes. Open the bleed screw. Use caution as steam and very hot coolant will escape. Perform this procedure a few times until no steam escapes. Check the reservoir and add coolant as needed. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another video in this series.